This is CBC Here and Now. An old tradition in a new way. How people are getting their fish and chips on Good Friday. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. Just ahead, Anthony speaks with MHA Pam Parsons about fears about this year's fishery. But let's start with the latest number of cases of COVID-19 in this province. Three new cases of COVID-19 were reported today. That brings the total to 239. 103 people have recovered from the illness. That's up by six from yesterday. Seven people are in hospital. That's up from one yesterday. And as we reported last night, there have been three deaths, all people who had underlying health conditions. Well, it's a Good Friday tradition, but this year a feed of fish and chips has to be done differently. Some people are cooking at home, others are getting takeout. Dessert and all, we're all good to go. Well, this man was picking up fish and chips to bring to nurses at the dialysis unit in St. John's. Fish and chips restaurants like Chess's in downtown St. John's are only accepting orders for curbside pickup. You can only enter the store once. Uh, they call you and say your order is ready and they have protocols to maintain physical distancing. But if you were hoping to pick up groceries today, you would have struggled. The province did allow stores to stay open today for essentials, but few did. Walmart, Dominion and Sobeys kept stores closed today. Well, imagine opening a restaurant during a pandemic. That's what happened with this new Chinese restaurant in the Airport Heights neighborhood of St. John's. The owners of Kung Fu Chinese restaurant had been working towards setting up their business since 2018. They decided to open for takeout only for now, and they're getting hundreds of calls a day. With health officials urging people not to get together for dinners over the Easter holiday, many have wondered if it's okay to drop off food to family and friends. Well, yesterday, the chief medical officer of health said the virus is not transmitted through food, but you still need to take precautions if you're dropping off food for someone. Obviously, uh, people need to make sure that they're, they are practicing safe hand washing and that uh, materials that are being uh, used to transport uh, food are not contaminated um, and uh, obviously if you are bringing it to a loved one's home that you're practicing safe physical distancing and not bursting anyone's bubble. Well this is a big weekend for Christians but they'll be doing things differently this year. Good morning. Welcome once again to St. Philip's Church on this Good Friday. This is how many church services and religious events will be taking place this weekend. Churches have been closed for weeks, so many parishes are streaming their services online. Reverend Randy Lockyer with the St. Philip's Anglican Church in Portugal Cove, St. Philip's, says he's also been reaching out to members of the congregation by phone. You can see his Easter service on the parish's Facebook page. Well, fish is certainly part of all of our Good Friday traditions in this province. And with the COVID-19, fish is on the minds of a lot of people. Joining me now is the MHA for this area of Harbor Grace, Port de Grave, Pam Parsons. So, Ms. Parsons, what kinds of concerns are you hearing? Let's start with people who actually fish. I'm hearing a lot of concerns actually from, from all players in our fishery, from our plant workers, from people who work on boats, for people who own boats, as well as dockside monitors here, because uh, let's face it, truck drivers as well. There's a lot of uh, employees and people who work in this industry. And I'm hearing concerns across the board. Um, people, the number one concern I'm hearing about is safety. And uh, the one thing uh, that, um, that people are aligned in there, I guess, and what they want to see safety is first. As you know, the seal fishery has been delayed because of COVID-19, as well as now the crab fishery has also been delayed uh, but what I'm hearing um, you know people are concerned people you know some people don't want to put their lives at risk of course it's not only them they're thinking about when they go out into the plants to work or go on a, go on a vessel and work it's, it's coming home to the family as well so there are concerns a lot of unanswered questions I guess safe to say at this point and even if the fishery doesn't start even if it is postponed or delayed the bills won't be delayed for very long that's safe, safe to say well, DFO has delayed the opening of all inshore fisheries until May 1st, but some harvesters are calling for the whole season to be canceled. The May 1st start date will be reviewed again two weeks before. 
Well, just as the fishing season braces for an impact from the coronavirus, the tourism industry is also expecting catastrophic losses. Here and now's Heather Gillis reports. 530,000 people visit Newfoundland and Labrador every year, more than live here. But this year, the industry expects far fewer tourists as people stay home to stay healthy during the coronavirus pandemic. St. John's is a destination for conferences hosting about 100 each year, bringing 25,000 people and nearly $50 million into the province. Now half of conferences have been cancelled or postponed. Destination St. John's CEO Kathy Duke says hotels are hurting. We have um, quite a few hotels here in St. John's and I think we have maybe five or six of them that have closed, which is um, you know, unbelievable that that could happen. Multi-day bus tours, like ones run by Parsons and Sons, had one operator cancel all bookings for the summer. If the trend continues, account manager Krista Pitcher says cancellations may reach $1 million. The fact that a virus could potentially crush us is uh, it's hard on the nerves and it's, it's very hard on the heart. O'Brien's boat tours is normally ramping up to hit the water on May 1st, but Transport Canada has prohibited non-essential activities like tourism until the end of June. Captain Joe O'Brien says normally 30 to 40,000 people take tours out of Bay Bulls to see puffins and whales. That's changed right now because right now instead of booking, they're doing cancellations and refunds. O'Brien expects losses to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, it's very downheartening, but uh, you can't be downhearted. Newfoundlanders uh, always are resilient people. Uh, we've, we've adapted to change and we'll, we'll adapt to this change now. Heather Gillis, CBC News, St. John's. There are three cases of COVID-19 on the Northern Peninsula. Two of those are connected to a hospital in St. Anthony. A patient and healthcare worker there have tested positive and contact tracing has yet to confirm how they caught the virus. Joining me now is St. Anthony Councillor Nikita Rose. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. Yes, no worries. I'm happy to do so. How have people in St. Anthony reacted to the news of the two cases at the hospital? Um, well, there's definitely a feeling of uneasiness regarding the presence of COVID-19 in our community, um, which is to be expected. You know, people are scared. Um, but overall, people are taking appropriate steps to stay, uh, stay safe and limit the spread. Um, we've had our stores and restaurants like uh, take the necessary precautions, as uh, suggested by our chief medical officer, um, limiting the number of guests in the store at once and uh, ensuring sanitation of the shopping carts and decreasing store hours and all those um, all those precautionary things that are uh, essential right now in, in our current uh, current state. And because there's been potentially community transmission uh, with these cases, is, is this extra worrisome, do you think, for people in your community? Because no one really knows where this virus came from. Right. I, th I think uh, the general consensus overall is, is worrisome, for sure. Everybody's been really cooperative and... Uh, seem to be adhering by the guidelines, and uh, there's a general consensus of health and safety in our community. Um, everyone's willing to do their part to help reduce the number of cases in our area. How is St. Anthony being affected by this in general? Well, the economic impact, obviously, is, is really big for us. Um, we understand that there's difficult times ahead. For example, St. Anthony is a big tourism center, uh, so that impact will be immense for sure. Um, we also understand like the effect on the businesses in our community. Um, so, you know, as council, we'd like to definitely encourage businesses to seek assistance through the provincial and federal uh, government programs that are being offered to uh, help op offset the impact of these difficult times. And, and we'll, we'll get through this as a community for sure. All right, Councillor Nikita Rose, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, we've been covering the demands on pharmacists in this pandemic. Much focus has been on vulnerable people at risk, and that includes people who need drugs to get off drugs. Anthony has more on that. Well, Carolyn, yesterday we talked about some of the difficulties pharmacists are facing just working in those tight spaces. Today, we're going to talk about something a little different, and that is how pharmacists and their staff are dealing with people who need methadone treatments as they try to deal with their drug addictions. Joining me once again from Munn's School of Pharmacy is Professor Debbie Kelly. So Debbie, give me a sense of uh, what the needs of methadone treat patients are and how they're being met in a pandemic. They're among our most vulnerable 
um, citizens right now. And I think the social isolation is really taking a toll. Most patients are used to going into the pharmacy to get their dose and visiting with their pharmacist every day. They're really doing the best that they can to make life easier for these patients. So one of the things that we're doing is trying to get as many people on carries as possible to keep them safe and not having to come out of their homes. So just to be clear, Debbie, that means making sure they have a certain number of doses when you talk about carries? Yes, sorry. So typically people who start on methadone have to come into the pharmacy to have their dose observed every day by the pharmacist. After a while, you, it's, it's not unusual for people to be able to um, carry some doses home and take their dose at home. For folks that do come into the pharmacy though, we're doing that a little bit differently too. So normally that would all be done within the private counseling room. What's happening is pharmacists are going into the room, preparing the drink and leaving it and then stepping outside leaving the door open and then the patient goes inside by themselves, consumes the drink where the pharmacist can observe and then the pharmacist signs off on the dose. And then with respect to um, carries um, out in the community, sometimes pharmacists are delivering those to people's homes as well. So again, minimizing the amount of disruption to their lives. During Snowmageddon, we saw this issue and some pharmacists were actually taking it upon themselves during the blizzard uh, to deliver methadone. So maybe that's one of the things that's actually going to survive uh, beyond this pandemic, who knows? For sure. I mean, you know, I think we have to really applaud our pharmacists that are out there. They're going above and beyond. They don't have easy access to personal protective personal protective equipment. You know, I heard a story of a pharmacist that delivered to a patient who um, is actually in isolation with symptoms and, you know, they again was starting um, on caries but that first dose has to be observed so the pharmacist drove to the patient's home and um, himself and dropped the the dose off at the door and then stepped back the patient came out um, and consumed the dose in front of the pharmacist so they could write down that they observed it and then they were able to continue on with the caries but you know again knowing that you're coming in contact with someone that um, is symptomatic it's it's anxiety provoking these guys are under a lot of stress for right now and they really are unsung heroes um, but you know I'm hearing great stories from the public and how appreciative they are to their pharmacists going above and beyond um, he hearing notes of encouragement notes of thanks little gifts being left on the doorstep for the pharmacy team um, when when deliveries are being picked up so that goes such a long way to be recognized for the hard work that they're putting in and really um, for being recognized for providing care and, and stepping up like all the members of the healthcare team um, so thanks for that. Oh, Professor Kelly, appreciate you sharing uh, your insight and those, uh, and those anecdotes. They're very telling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Costco is making some changes. It says it'll give priority access to shoppers who are health care workers and first responders. It says those members should show their Costco card and proof they work in health care or as a first responder and they can move to the front of any line. Well, prepare to have your heart warmed. Here is a father-daughter reunion, 14 days in the making. Come up with daddy. Come up with daddy. <laughs> After 14 days of isolation in a tent in Port Blanford, <laughs> Blaine Tucker was finally reunited with his one-year-old daughter, Ella Rose. Tucker had returned to the province two weeks ago and had to self-isolate. He stayed in a tent to keep away from his family and prevent any potential COVID-19 exposure to his wife and daughter. Now, though, they're back together in time for the Easter weekend. Aww. <laughs> Hi. That is an awe moment for sure.
Welcome back to Here and Now. A hockey sensation from St. John's has won Rookie of the Year with the NCAA. Alex Newhook is a forward with the Boston College Eagles. He led the NCAA in rookie goal scoring and tied for the top spot in total points on his team. Uh, Boston College was expecting uh, was expected to be among the contenders for the national championship, but the season was suspended due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Well, how are kids managing during this pandemic? School is canceled and many are stuck at home. Anthony met up with two brothers in Fort de Grave to get their thoughts. What's this pandemic been like for you guys, you two brothers? Well, um, we've been okay with it. He's a little nervous about it every now and then. But I'm, I don't think there's anything to worry because I think Justin Trudeau will actually help us a lot with this situation. Okay, why are you nervous? Well, I'm nervous because of because I don't want to get it. So when you're walking around Port de Grave, what do you do to make sure you don't get too close? When we're walking around Port de Grave, we just like keep our distance safe. If someone's like over there, we would kind of just like stay six feet away and move to the side to keep our distance away from them. Right. We've never seen this kind of thing before. How weird is this? It's weird being inside because I'm like the outside person. I love being outside. And you? It's weird because, I mean, like, same with him. I like to be outside and I would run around play with friends. Now I can't because of corona. So it's kind of like the longest snow day you guys have ever had. Yeah. yeah. But I try to go for two walks a day. So. Good man. And you? Yeah, I go for two walks a day with him too. All right. Sometimes three. Yeah, sometimes. Well, listen, guys, good luck. It won't last forever. We'll get through this. Yep. Thanks we for will. your time. Oh, no problem. Ashley is here now with a look at the weather forecast and it was a pretty me pretty messy day in St. John's. Started off with some snow and then some rain. Oh yeah, it was and it's a pretty quick moving system as well, which is uh, good news, but we do have that area of low pressure. It's sitting off over the maritime provinces and uh, we're seeing that area of precipitation out ahead of it, especially with those stronger winds. Uh, winds peaked uh, in the Wreck House area at 161 kilometers per hour earlier today. We are starting to see those wind warnings drop off because, uh, and we should actually see those winds die down as we head through the overnight tonight. But uh, we're seeing that uh, shower activity continuing across most of eastern Newfoundland. And as we head through the night tonight, we're actually going to potentially see a few breaks in the cloud cover as well but into the evening hours those temperatures are going to climb right along with it so anywhere from five to as four to as much as six degrees is what we're expecting to reach as our daytime highs earlier or later this evening and then as we head through the night tonight we're going to stay pretty much near or just a little bit above zero so Areas in eastern Newfoundland will more than likely see some drizzle through central. That's either flurries or drizzle. And then along the west coast, we should see some flurries. Uh, your snow will taper to flurries for southeastern portions of Labrador, but then uh, make its way across the big land as we head into the early morning hours. So it's going to be a, a generally uh, cloudy and snowy night for you. Into tomorrow morning, though, uh, we're still going to see this area of low pressure very much in play generally unsettled through the day but uh, we're gonna see a little bit more or a little bit more sunshine as well with the potential for some scattered drizzle or, or showers along the eastern portion of the island towards central that's either flurries or drizzle and then we've got flurries on the west coast and then up through Labrador, generally unsettled as well. You're just going to see some areas of flurries. Up through northern portions of Labrador, though, you could pick up between as much as 5 to uh, 10 centimeters of snow by the time Sunday morning rolls around. Now, temperatures tomorrow will be uh, mild again. We're looking at uh, 3 to as much as 6 degrees. The winds will stay breezy, 40 to 60 kilometers per hour. Areas in southeastern portion of uh, Labrador, you could see some showers as well. Otherwise, keeping that potential for flurries in through central as well as lab west hovering around the zero degree mark now sunday easter sunday certainly looks like the best of the weekend a lot more sunshine in play across the board keeping some potential for a few scattered or isolated showers for the Buren peninsula as well as avalon some morning flurries possible along the west coast and the same thing uh, for areas in central labrador you're seeing a high near two degrees and then lab city you'll probably stay cloudy through the day and hovering around the zero degree mark with that potential for some flurries so 
wanted to share this beautiful sunrise, Good Friday sunrise in Chance Cove. Phyllis uh, Petal shared that photo with us. Thank you so much for sending that in. And if you have any weather photos to share with us, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Thanks, Phyllis, and thanks, Ashley. Have a great weekend. Let's take a moment now for those celebrating anniversaries and birthdays this week. Happy anniversary to Harry and Blanche Harris. Happy 62nd anniversary to Rebe and Gordon Fifield. Charles and Avril Piercy are celebrating 58 years together. Happy 59th anniversary to Harry and Dora Coos. Happy 56th to Ken and Olive Pittman. Florence and Cecil Gilbert are celebrating their 58th anniversary. Happy 54th anniversary to Elmo and Lottie Quinlan. Ida and Wes Thompson are celebrating 59 years of marriage. Happy 51st anniversary to Roy and Elizabeth Taylor. Happy 67th anniversary to Joseph and Florence Hopkins. Happy 59th to Harvey and Selma Goodyear. Sterling and Marion Burton are celebrating
celebrating 61 years together. Jack and Ivy Marsh are celebrating 62 years of marriage. Happy 50th anniversary to Randy and Marjorie Hogg. Happy 53rd to Bob and June Smith. Happy 65th anniversary to Edna and Gerald Hodder. Happy 50th anniversary to Frank and Dina Benson. Happy 51st to Junior and Rowena Jackson. Leno Leona and Freeman Rideout are celebrating 63 years together. Happy 67th to Job and Sybil Blackmore. Happy 63rd to Norm and Rita Collins. Happy 50th anniversary to Florence and Freeman Gilbert. Happy 50th anniversary to Richard and Veronica Sutton. And happy 51st anniversary to Bernie and Marina Sheaves. Now to the birthdays. Happy 91st birthday to Fanny Fagner in Carbonier. Happy 90th birthday to Beulah Cuff in Gander. Elsie Higdon of New Harbor is turning 100 and happy 95th birthday to Catherine Kilfoy in St. Lawrence. Fine crowd, congratulations once again. Well, a local organization is looking for any personal protective equipment residents of the province might have. The group is asking businesses and individuals to register whatever protective gear they may have on, on its website. Team leader Kathy Bennett says they're looking for medical grade equipment in unopened boxes and individual packaging. The group held a phone blitz yesterday and said it received a number of calls from people offering up supplies between five and seven thousand units. It's no longer taking calls, but if you have something to offer, you can submit it on the website. Well, here is a big fish for Good Friday. Oh, that's a fish. Do you see it? Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, at first they doubted him, but Hunter Warford knew he had something big on the line. A moment of ice fishing magic from Labrador West. <laughs> that is some serious excitement. Well, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. Coming up next, CBC News from Nova Scotia. I want this. Come on, buddy. Come on now. Come on. Oh, that's a fish. Do you see it?